Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILO Pathology. Uh, this is a three part uh, series which I am going to talk about uh, tubulo interstitial disorders. Okay. In this part one, I will be concentrating more on acute tubular injury or acute tubular necrosis. In this uh, part one, we will be uh, knowing about the classification of tubulo interstitial diseases and we will discuss in detail about the etiopathogenesis, morphology and clinical features of acute tubular injury or acute tubular necrosis. Now, we should understand that diseases of the tubules does not affect only the tubules, it also affects the interstitium and that is the reason why these are collectively referred to as tubulo interstitial diseases. Okay, so there are two types of tubulo interstitial diseases, one which is due to ischemic or toxic injury, another because of inflammation. Okay, so this ischemic or toxic uh, injury resulting in tubulo interstitial disease is referred to as acute tubular injury or acute tubular necrosis. So when we talk about inflammatory, uh, you know, causes of tubular interstitial diseases, these are referred to as tubulo interstitial nephritis, okay, meaning inflammation, okay, tubulo interstitial nephritis, which can be because of, see, inflammation can be because of infection and non-infection causes. So the infection ones are mainly referred to as pyelonephritis. So that we'll be discussing in detail in the next uh, few parts of tubular interstitial disorders. So apart from infection, the toxins or metabolic diseases can also result in tubular interstitial nephritis. For example, you know, like drugs, heavy metals, urate nephropathy, all these things can result in tubular interstitial nephritis. Okay. So physical agents which can result in tubular interstitial nephritis could be because of obstruction or because of any neoplasm. Sometimes immunologic causes can also be there like for example in the cases of sarcoidosis, in cases of renal transplant rejections, okay, there can be evidence of tubulo interstitial nephritis. Lastly, when you do not know anything, it is classified as idiopathic or under miscellaneous causes. Now coming to acute tubular injury or acute tubular necrosis, it is basically a clinical pathologic entity. It's not a pure pathologic entity, it's a clinical pathologic entity which is characterized by acute renal failure with or without evidence with or without morphologic evidence of injury to the tubules okay so the necrosis may or may not be present in these cases so that is the reason why the earlier term acute tubular necrosis is now replaced to acute tubular injury now how does this acute renal failure uh, is identified so the clinical evidence of acute renal failure is by demonstration of rapid reduction of renal function and urine output. Okay. So most, I mean, for example, you know, you, there is a decrease in urine output, there is increase in blood urea nitrogen, increase in, increase in serum creatinine levels. So all these are evidence of acute renal failure. Okay. So that is rapid reduction. So remember, acute tubular injury is the most common cause of acute kidney injury. So acute tubular injury is further classified based on the etiology into two types. One, ischemic type of acute tubular injury and two, toxic type of acute tubular injury. Now what are the causes of ischemic type of acute tubular injury? One, it could be because of decrease in the circulating blood volume as in the cases of shock. So when I say shock, you need to remember all causes of shock. For example, you know, loss of blood in the case of massive hemorrhage. It could be because of loss of severe fluid, like for example, you know, burns, severe burns, dehydration, or even prolonged diarrhea. Okay, it can be because of congestive cardiac failure, or it can be because of septic shock. Whatever, all said and done, all these results in decrease circulating blood volume. So next one is involvement of renal blood vessels. So these renal blood vessel or renal vascular involvement can also result to ischemia and that could be uh, in the setting of microscopic polyangitis, in the settings of you know hemolytic uremic syndrome or even thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. All these three entities you know can result in diffuse involvement of intrarenal blood vessels thereby causing ischemia. So moving on to the toxic type of acute tubular injury okay the causes could be it could be endogenous factors or exogenous toxins okay so the most common endogenous toxins are myoglobin and hemoglobin whenever there is excess of hemoglobin or whenever there is excess of myoglobin as in the cases of severe you know muscle uh, injuries these can result in toxic damage to the tubules and the most common exogenous causes are 
it could be because of drugs see drugs as in antibiotics like you know the most common drug implicated is gentamicin it could be amino glycosid antibiotics or even amphotericin b okay and uh, uh, sometimes radio contrast dyes can also result in injury organic solvents like carbon tetrachloride or ethylene glycol and even radiation can result in toxic type of acute tubular injury having known the types of acute tubular injury as toxic and ischemic what you need to understand is that acute tubular injury is a reversible process okay so that is the reason why you need to understand that there should be a proper management and the proper management is the one which decides whether the patient leads to recovery or he succumbs to the disease now it is also important to know that why the renal tubules are prone to injury particularly the proximal convoluted tubules now there are few reasons for that one proximal convoluted tubules they have increased surface area for reabsorption okay and two and these have a very high transport system for ions and organic acids and for these two to happen they need to have very high rate of metabolism okay and for that high rate of metabolism these tubules should have high oxygen consumption so now you know why kidney will have high oxygen consumption right and because the renal tubules require more and more oxygen these are more sensitive to ischemia and they are also more vulnerable to toxins they are sensitive to ischemia because they need more and more oxygen for the normal functioning of the tubules and kidney right the tubules are vulnerable to toxins because these have increased surface area for reabsorption right now let us understand the pathogenesis of acute tubular injury now two important things you need to consider one the pathogenesis can be because of tubular injury directly or it could be because of disturbances in the blood flow let us understand in detail okay whether it is ischemia or whether it is toxin the ultimate feature would be oliguria oliguria is because of reduced gfr now we need to understand why and how ischemia and toxin results in reduction of glomerular filtration rate whether it is because of ischemia or toxin ultimately the cells are injured okay the most common one being ischemia the cells are injured what cells are injured it could be tubular epithelial cells or the endothelial cells so whenever there is a sublethal endothelial injury that results in release of vasoconstrictor called endothelin and that results in vasoconstriction okay so when there is vasoconstriction automatically there is reduced gfr and that results in decrease in urinary output or oliguria okay now what happens whenever there is a tubular epithelial cell injury okay so remember whenever we talk about cell injury we think about two things one whether it is a reversible injury or irreversible injury right now let us see what happens in reversible injury so reversible injury as you remember it the first thing which happens is there is redistribution of membrane proteins and that results in loss of polarity of those cells okay once there is loss of polarity that results in abnormal ion transport which leads to increased sodium delivery to the distal tubules and if you remember whenever there is increased distal tubular sodium concentration and that results in macula densa cells to swell and then there is something called tubuloglomerular feedback which stimulates the renin angiotensin system and that results in vasoconstriction okay so the vasoconstriction could be because of direct endothelial cell injury where it releases endothelin causing vasoconstriction or it could be because of tubular epithelial cell injury where there is increased delivery of sodium to the distal tubules through the tubuloglomerular feedback there is vasoconstriction ultimately all this leads to reduced glomerular filtration rate another manifestation of reversible cell injury is detachment of cells okay whenever the cells are detached these cells they aggregate together and then they form a, a mass within the tubule resulting in tubular obstruction so whenever there is tubular obstruction that results in increased intratubular pressure and that results in reduced glomerular filtration rate death whether the death is because of uh, necrosis or apoptosis doesn't matter see these dead cells can again result in tubular obstruction okay the dead cells can can be shed off and then they can obstruct the tubules or these dead cells can result in leakage of the tubules okay, okay? because there is loss of continuity of the lining epithelium there can be tubular backleak and once there is tubular backleak there is reduction of the flow in the tubule so decreased tubular flow again results in reduced glomerular filtration rate okay now tubular backleak can also result in interstitial edema 
and you know that once there is interstitial edema that results in increased interstitial pressure and because there is interstitial pressure it again exerts further damage further pressure onto the tubules leading to further damage okay and that may result in reduced glomerular filtration rate see apart from these things the epithelial injury can also result in expression of various cytokines and adhesion molecules okay and because there is expression of cytokines and adhesion molecules many inflammatory cells come in and then there are lots of recruitment of inflammatory cells and these inflammatory cells also have a role in tubular injury in this illustration what you learned is mainly there is tubular injury and there is vasoconstriction whatever it is all these things result in basically reduction of glomerular filtration rate leading to oliguria so this is just a schematic illustration of the nephron so these pink areas which i have marked is basically a area which is necrosed okay so these are the necrosed areas and in between the necrosed areas are normal areas so there is patchy necrosis in the case of acute tubular injury so in this case you can make out that there is diffuse necrosis involved in the proximal convoluted tubule okay and a part of distal convoluted tubule as well so this is a scenario where you find in toxic type of acute tubular injury whereas this is the most common manifestation of ischemic type of tubular injury okay so as i said there will be normal areas in between the necrotic areas and it is these normal areas which help in recovery when there is recovery only when the causative agent is removed again the recovery also depends upon the proliferative and differentiative potential of these tubular epithelial cells now now coming to the morphology all you need to see is evidence of tubular epithelial injury okay so how do you see that you will see the evidence of tubular injury by rupture of tubular basement membrane that is referred to as tubulorexis okay now again the lumen of the tubules of the particularly the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting ducts are filled with casts and coming to the interstitium as you already know because of backlick there can be edema so you find evidence of edema and then presence of leukocytes particularly the acute inflammatory cells lastly you can even find evidence of regeneration if this is in the recovery phase so what is important at this point of time is that there is more involvement of proximal convoluted tubule and the damage is more pronounced in the case of toxic type of acute tubular necrosis now what are the clinical features clinical features are conveniently you know divided into phases phase 1 is a initiation phase which will be seen within 36 hours of the renal tubular injury and that is evidenced by the presence of decreased urinary output and increased blood urea nitrogen levels and the second phase is a maintenance phase where there is oliguria persistent elevation of blood urea nitrogen level there is more and more salt and water overload so the most important thing we need to consider at this point of time is that there will be hyperkalemia and then metabolic acidosis in the maintenance phase now if the patient is lucky enough and if the offending agent is taken off he might move on to the recovery phase where there will be increase in the urinary output okay so there will be polyuria and because of polyuria because of large amounts of urine being excreted the large amounts of sodium and potassium are also lost unlike in the case of maintenance phase where hyperkalemia is a feature in this case hypokalemia is an important feature so also worth it to remember that in this recovery phase these individuals are more prone for infections they are susceptible for infections moving on to the prognosis so if it is a nephrotoxic type of acute tubular injury or acute tubular necrosis most of them recover if the other organs are not involved whereas in the case of ischemic type of acute tubular injury or necrosis because it is due to sepsis or shock the prognosis is very grim and there is more than 50% mortality in the cases of ischemic type of acute tubular injury so in summary we discussed about the classification of tubulo interstitial diseases and discussed in detail about acute tubular necrosis particularly the etiopathogenesis a bit about morphology and clinical features In the part two of tubular interstitial disorders, I'll be discussing about in detail about acute pyelonephritis or tubular interstitial nephritis. If you have any questions, please post it in the comment section below. I can answer those queries. Do subscribe and don't forget to share. Thank you.